When it comes to must-have packages in Unity, Cinemachine is definitely one of those tools at the top. By default, every single scene in Unity comes with a main camera, whether you're doing 2D or 3D, and the main camera kind of sucks. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not gonna like follow your player or move around or do any interesting mechanics, you know, without you specifying it manually. It's just really basic. So where a Cinemachine comes in is it basically provides you a bunch of virtual cameras with a lot of functionality out of the gate that you can expand upon if you want to. And you can do a really powerful stuff with it. But first, let's show you how to actually get Cinemachine into your project. So in Unity, let's go up to the Window tab and go down to Package Manager. And then depending on the version of Unity you're using, you may have to go to the top left tab here and go to Unity Registry, at which point you can then find Cinemachine. So I'll just go ahead and click that and install, and it will take a minute here. All right, so it just finished installing, and at the top now you'll see we have a new tab called Cinemachine. And so when you expand this tab, you'll see that there's like a bunch of different options here, which will be overwhelming if you don't know what any of them do. The virtual camera is your standard default, and then all of these other ones have some sort of base settings that offer something different. And I'm not gonna go through all of these. I think there's a lot of videos and resources out there that cover it really well. But for example, you could have this dolly track with cart camera, and in your game, you could basically outline a path for your camera to follow, and it will go along that path, kind of similar to a Star Fox game. But since my project is 2D, I'm gonna create this 2D camera. So just by adding that camera, you'll see some things have happened. For one, we have this new Cinemachine Virtual Camera 1 that's in our scene, and then also our main camera now has this icon attached to it. And something interesting to note is that our main camera and our virtual camera are now linked. And what I mean by that is if I move my virtual camera, you'll see that the main camera moves with it. And so for all intents and purposes, you can kind of think of these now as two combined cameras. So let's take a look at the Cinemachine settings in our inspector. There's a lot of different stuff to look at here, and there's a lot of stuff you can play with on your own, but I'm gonna showcase how you can set up some of the easier stuff really quickly. And again, right now, it's just like our main camera acted before, right? So let's change that. Let's make it so that our player becomes the target our camera follows. And you'll see in our inspector, we actually have a handy option here to provide a game object to follow. Or alternatively, if you want your camera to stay in place, kind of like a security camera and follow the game object, you could do look at. And that's why it's always gonna be aiming towards you know, the game object in question, but follow will actually follow it around. So let's go ahead and just put our player in follow. And you'll notice in our game view that we now have this blue box appearing, which I'll cover in a second. So if we play the game now, you'll see out of the box, we actually have camera follow capabilities, and it's much smoother than it would be if you just dropped like the main camera as a child object to the player. And so it's kind of subtle here, but leading back into that blue box we saw around the player, You'll notice I'm able to move up and down a little bit. And then when I stop moving, it still kind of like slides back into place, right? This is like a smooth follow that's going on. It's not a hard follow. And that's because there's settings here that we can configure with. And where you can actually modify these settings for this blue box is in this body section here in the inspector. We can expand this and now you'll see a whole bunch of camera settings pop up. And the ones I want to look at here are X and Y damping. I'll make this pretty exaggerated and increase it from one to five in X and Y. And now when I walk around, you'll see it really slowly starts moving back into place when I move, right? It's very obvious now that there's some slow, smooth following going on. Alternatively, I could make X and Y damping zero. And now we get what I referred to before as a hard follow, where your player is always gonna be directly in the center of the camera, which may or may not be what you want. I'm gonna put those back to one though. Another interesting thing that you would want in here that you don't get with the main camera is what's called the dead zone. So we have dead zone width and height. I'm just gonna go ahead and set both to 0.5. And now you'll actually see in our game view that that blue box has a gap around our player, right? You can kind of see where my mouse here is outlining it. We have this rectangle around our player that is a dead zone. And what this means is that until you move out of the dead zone, the camera is not gonna move. So I can walk around, you'll notice the camera is not moving at all, right? And then as soon as I get into that dead zone, it starts to move up or it starts to move left, right? You can kind of see what's going on. 
And this keeps it so your camera is, you know, focused on an area until you get to the edges, or you can kind of play around with that and see what works for you. But that just gives you a little bit more flexibility if you don't want the camera to always be moving on you. There's a lot of other settings here, and Cinemachine offers a lot. You have a way of setting up timelines and doing cutscenes, things like this. If I go into all of that, this is gonna be like an hour long video. But in terms of things you can just do really quickly with a few button clicks, something else that's kind of cool is you can add noise to your camera. Right, so we have this noise drop down here. Right now it's none. I'm gonna go ahead and select basic multi-channel Perlin. And then we have a noise profile here. And you'll see we have a few options. So if you did like 60s shake, it basically, you will you know, it's like an earthquake's going on, you got some camera shake. And then you have settings like amplitude gain and frequency gain, which you can modify. So let's just crank this up. And you'll see it's very aggressive now, right? But you could also have something much more normal. Like the rest of these are called handheld and it kind of simulates as if you were like holding a camera a little bit unsteady. So let's just do regular settings with handheld, normal, mild. And you can kind of see it just gives you a little bit of a wobble on the camera. For me, I think this is a little bit too much. It'd make me sick after a while. But if you tone down the amplitude to something like 0.2, you know, then I think it just gives it a little bit of eye candy. It's just a little bit less static. Depending on the style of your game, it might give it a more polished look if it fits the theme. Main point being, they have some cool effects that you can just plug and play from the get-go. The last thing I want to show is you can actually modify those settings through script, right? So at the top of something, you could say using Cinemachine. And this component's called the Cinemachine Virtual Camera. So we could say, public Cinemachine virtual camera. And then I'm also just gonna have two quick game objects. And if you reference that variable, you can do a whole bunch of stuff, right? Like we can update what the camera is following or looking at. So basically I'm just gonna have it, if you press Q, the camera's gonna follow the player. And if you press E, it's gonna follow the scarecrow object. And once you wire up everything in the inspector, we can now play the game. And at this point it's following the player, but if I press E, you'll see it transitions pretty smoothly to the scarecrow. It's not very jarring, right? It doesn't instantly teleport over it. It finds its way over there. And so if you had like a tactics game or a strategy game or somewhere where you wanted to blend your transitions in between cameras, they already give you a pretty smooth one at the gate and then you can modify this yourself so that it's an even smoother transition or maybe it does some sort of effect, but it's pretty cool. So that about wraps it up. I know it wasn't a super in-depth look, but hopefully this helps get you started with actually using Cinemachine. You should start sooner than later because it's so powerful and you should use it in every project. And the more you play with it, the more you're gonna learn, the more comfortable you'll be with it. So thanks for watching. If it helped you out, then please remember to subscribe because it really helps the channel. See you in the next one.